Good evening, good evening, and welcome to episode 72 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantunga Kumalo. It's the Thursday edition of the Private Property Podcast, and I'm sure many of you, of course, heard the good news that the Reserve Bank has the repo rate by 25 basis points, and that, of course, brings it to 3.5%. It's one of those very historic lows. I think I, I was seeing earlier that the last time it was at such a low was in uh, July of 1966. That was even before I was probably an idea in my parents mind. Um, so I'm sure a lot of us who are certainly interested in property probably want to find different ways to take advantage of these low interest rates and we'll certainly be exploring what those different ways are as we have when we've seen the interest rate go down through the different cycles in the past few weeks. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people who are certainly in debt this is also of course welcome news certainly for all of you because this is also the time when you know cutting down on your debt or paying down your debt as much as possible becomes uh, you know such an important thing we're certainly going to be exploring the different ways you can take advantage of these lower interest rates and what they exactly mean i mean there's certainly been different you know people who are saying don't go buying a property just because you're seeing historically lower interest rates because you might get a false um, sense of affordability. So having a holistic view of how your finances essentially look like and understanding how to better uh, take advantage of the low interest rates is so important. Certainly for those who already have properties in your portfolio, what you want to be doing is perhaps going back to your banks and uh, renegotiating your, your, your interest. Perhaps you're now in a better uh, financial position and you're thinking, look, these interest rates are fairly low. I've been doing fairly well. I've had this bond facility uh, for X number of years and I've always paid it very diligently, perhaps you even pay extra every month. So this is that time where you should be proactive in having that conversation with the bank, which certainly, you know, given different tips around how you can best approach it. And that the worst you can get is a no from the bank. Uh, certainly them saying that they're not in a position to renegotiate your interest rate or even to offer a lower one. Perhaps you might explore going to other banks. But of course, it is important to make sure Sure that you do the right research, find out if that's going to necessarily be the right financial decision for you. And these are some of the issues that we always like covering right here on the Private Property Podcast. And if you've missed any episode in the past where we've covered some of these, then do go on, whether it's on our Facebook page to look at the past episodes, but certainly also on the Private Property YouTube channel where we've got a special playlist for the daily podcast. You can go back to all the different episodes where we've spoken to various experts who've helped us better navigate and understand what it means to be investing in times of crisis. I think one of the episodes that actually stands out for me was the one where we had a full panel, um, you know, various experts with different expertise and different um, backgrounds. Uh, I remember one was Ustindi Lokumalo, who, you know, is the chairperson of Sakisizu or Property Stockfile. We also had in Tato, we also had, um, it was, uh, I think, uh, Booth, who, you know, also, of course, is into the property space. We've had him more than once right on the Private Property Podcast. And having a better understanding of what, what, what are some of the reasons people should or shouldn't be uh, you know, investing in real estate during this time of crisis. You've certainly had different, heard different people saying this is the right time to buy the property. Is it really? And if it is, how do you make sure that you make the right financial decisions? So this evening, we want to be looking at somebody who was able to take advantage of the various opportunities that property presented, you know, itself. And that is Ukosi Makuluda, who is a property owner of Susana Heights. Kind of just having a few technical issues with her. Uh, and, and I'm sure that you know the team will probably take a quick break and we'll see if we can if we're able to bring her back and i think her story is one that's actually so inspiring a lot of us sometimes take a very short-term view to property and i'm sure if you've certainly been following with the show you get a sense that the different guests that we've had always give us a sense that you need to take a very long-term approach to property and find different ways of best navigating your property journey. And that is something that she certainly has been able to do. I know that a lot of you have heard me talk about TAF, who even you know, interviewed somebody from TAF and some of the funding opportunities that they had. And you know, Kosi is a candidate who was actually able to take advantage of the funding opportunities from TAF. And navigating even that space is something that I'm sure is so foreign to so many of us. So from this conversation, we want to get the snapshot of how she went from being a travel agent to essentially owning her own multi-unit uh, development and really understanding the story behind the Susana Hats. And if anything, this really will give us a, a better understanding of what it also takes 
to you know to buy sometimes whether it's a piece of land or sometimes a property that still needs to be worked on and then develop it to meet the goals that you have and even meet some of the financial the, the, the money that you're able to get from your know, various financiers and understanding some of the challenges that perhaps will come about because i'm sure many of us who are in this property thing have encountered various challenges from perhaps signing an OTP that you didn't fully understand and grasp, or perhaps uh, you know not ensuring that uh, an inspection is done before you buy a property and only realizing after the fact that there might actually be something wrong with the property. And learning, of course, from some of these mistakes that we've made that so many of us certainly have learned along the way. We're still having those financial difficulties in reaching course. In the meantime, I certainly want to be hearing from you if you're on your property journey, what have been some of the lessons that you have learned? And this could be from buying your first property, for example, uh, as opposed to only buying a rental property, perhaps you've gone beyond just buying your primary residence and you've also added different properties on your, in your property portfolio. What have been some of the lessons that you've learned along the way that have helped you uh, on your property journey? And that has also helped you grow your property journey because I'm, I think a lot of us who, are, who might be in the early stages are thinking, okay, wow, getting that first one is already such a big mission. I don't know what's going to take you know, to get to the second one. And then you get the second one and the third one and the fourth one. Then you hit that you know glass ceiling and you think, I don't know if it's actually possible for me to scale. So there's certainly are various types of challenges that you encounter on your property journey sometimes it might be issues with your tenant sometimes it might be issues with the agent that you're working with and i think getting a better understanding of how to best navigate that is so important so share with us down below we certainly want to hear from you we're going to be taking a quick commercial break to see if we're able to connect with our guest this evening, Okosi Makuluda, who I did say, you know, is the person behind Susana Hearts. We do hope that we'll be able to reach her uh, on the line. So we're going to go for a quick break and we'll be back just after this. Hi, I'm Clinton Banfield. Our family and I live in Cape Town on the Western Seaboard. To be able to wake up and take in the scenery every day is an absolute pleasure. We probably have the best views of Table Mountain. There's some really amazing suburbs in our neighborhood. There's Milnerton, which is a central hub close to the city. There's some beautiful homes situated along the canal, which give you a breathtaking view of Table Mountain. A little bit further along the canal, you'll find Milnerton Golf Club, which is a great place to unwind with your mates. Then we have Bloberg, which is world-renowned for its beaches, where you'll often see kite surfers taking full advantage of the wind. To top it off, there's a great variety of family restaurants in the area, like Blue Peter, where people love to meet. The Bayside Mall is a landmark in Tableview, giving you an all-round retail experience and a relaxed and convenient environment. As a family, we've chosen to live in Atlantic Beach Golf Estate in Malkborstrand. Our suburb is so chilled, it really gives you this constant holiday feel. We've lived here for two years and we've really enjoyed the laid-back lifestyle and this is our neighborhood. I'm Jared Siegel, I'm a local restaurateur and the owner of Jared's Espresso Bar and Eatery in Seapoint. I'm a Cape Town local, Camps Bay born and bred, and I've been living in Sydney, Australia for the last few years. Living abroad, I've always been drawn to the mother city and I've recently decided to come back home. Taking lifestyle factors into consideration, Bantry Bay has been the perfect fit for me. Living on the Atlantic seaboard really resonates with what I'm all about. From the active lifestyle, the amazing food culture, its family-friendly environment, and amazing natural beauty, the quality of life we have on offer is really unique. 
The Atlantic seaboard has some of the most beautiful suburbs in the country. With areas like Camps Bay and its world-renowned beach culture and the recent refurbishment of Sea Point Promenade, it's no wonder our neighborhood has such a global appeal. After a long day of hard work, there's nothing better than taking a walk along Clifton Beach, sharing a moment and watching the sunset. Trying to offer something authentic to the community, I'm not about reinventing the wheel, just doing the classics really well. And this is my neighborhood. Hi, I'm Lubuntu Webster. I'm an entrepreneur. I moved to Sandton to pursue a dream. I've based myself in Sandton because it's the gateway to Africa. The neighborhood of Sandton is alive. It's alive with possibility. It's got the most amazing vibe. If you need to get anything done, this is the place to get it done. One of the things I really love about Sandton is how it lights up at night. If those lights don't inspire you, nothing will. Sandton is the richest square mile in Africa. It has everything from shopping in Sandton City to five-star hotels like a Michelangelo for my international guests. It works for me to be here. There are so many designer stores. There's an abundance of clothes and everything else to choose from. Being an entrepreneur, I travel a lot, so it's really convenient to be able to get onto the Hau train and in 15 minutes, I'm at the airport. Business is important to me, but my family is everything. And that's why my family and I are looking to move into one of the suburbs in Sandton. Sandton has some of the most exclusive homes in the country, in places like Hyde Park and Sandown. A little bit less fast-paced is your suburbs like Bryanston and Livonia. Bryanston was a natural choice. It's got great open spaces, it's safe. My son's already at a really good school there. Sandton gives me great variety, from an awesome nightlife to beautiful places for lunch to spas where I can really relax and recharge. Things happen in Sandton, and that's my neighborhood. Welcome back to episode 72 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantunga Kumalo. Well, tech issues are having the better of us this evening, but we're not going to let it get us down. Uh, we are having, uh, you know, technical difficulties with having our guest on this evening. Uh, Ukosi Makulota, who I did say, is the owner of Sasana Huts and Heights, rather. And I think one of the big things is certainly wanting to have a conversation with her around her property journey. I think one of the things that we certainly do around to other private property podcasts is bring different people who've, uh, you know, who are slightly further ahead than some of us on their property journeys get a sense of what some of the, the lessons that they've learned along the journey and some of the tips that they certainly want to share with us. Because one of the big things that we're certainly learning right here on the Private, private Property Podcast is there are certain mistakes we don't need to make. Other people have made them. All we need to do is simply learn from those mistakes. And that's, of course, the big question for them this evening, seeing as we can't have our guest on, is 
what lessons have you learned along your property journey? You know, what were some of the mistakes that you made along the way uh, that could have even cost you money, for example, that you've learned from that you want to share with us as a community so that we don't have to make that mistake? We certainly want to hear from you. So do share those right below, whether you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. We want to hear what those lessons are so that we can help each other out. So that we can certainly, you know, continue this conversation on our social media platforms where we learn from each other and make sure that those of us, of course, who want to take advantage of this historic low interest rate uh, cut do not make some of those mistakes. We saw earlier on that uh, Reserve Bank Governor Lesetja Khanyaho did announce that the interest rates have gone down by 25 basis, 25 basis points, uh, bringing it to 3.5%. I know a lot of us, certainly nobody who is my age has seen, has lived in a South Africa with such low interest rates. The last time rates were the slow was in July 1966. So it is historically low interest rates. A lot of people are going to want to try and take advantage of it. And we've had different um, you know, guests who've given us different insights on how to look at low interest rates and making the right decision for whether this is the right time for you to buy or not to buy. And in the event where you've missed those episodes, do go back on our social media platforms, whether you go back right here on Facebook or perhaps also right here on our YouTube channel where we did have that panel discussion. And we'll even post the link right here below where we had a panel of experts looking at whether right now is the time to invest or not invest. When you look at the low interest rates and certainly back then we we're predicting that there was going to be another interest rate cut as we're seeing right now. I'm already seeing people say that the Reserve Bank certainly has room to cut interest rates just slightly further. And I'm sure a lot of property enthusiasts are certainly looking forward to that interest rate cut in the coming weeks. And if it does happen, then I'm sure it's going to, you know, it's going to be one of those exciting times uh, for people who have property or who want to be buying more property. But it's also a really good time, of course, for people who are in debt and are looking to, you know, pay off as much of their debt as possible. And that is certainly something that I'm sure a lot of people are looking to prioritize. Well, folks, we're going to be there. Yeah, so I think, folks, you know, I'll certainly be, you know, going through some of the lessons that you've learned along the way on your property journey uh, that you'd like to share with us as a community so that we're able to learn from each other. I think I certainly share some of the mistakes that I've made on, on my property journey, you know, from not knowing that when you buy a bonded property, there are two attorneys that handle a transaction as opposed to one. So not budgeting for paying two attorneys. And that's, of course, now a mistake none of us are going to make because we know that you've got the transferring attorneys and your bond registration attorneys. So as you save up for your deposit, you also want to make sure that you're saving up for you know, those two sets of attorneys. And we're having here comments certainly from people at home who are sharing some of their lessons that they've learned along the way. Uh, we're hearing from Uma Tashingan who says, selling my first house to get into property investment was a mistake that she had. And I'm sure if you actually listen back to the conversation that we had with Unon Dumiso Kapai from APSA. We're looking at how you can make money from your um, home loan facility. So there's certainly different ways you can make money from your home loan facility or access money from your home loan facility where you don't have to go to the extent, for example, of selling that property. So you can either refinance uh, or perhaps use some of the uh, you know funds that are in the flexi, uh, flexi save. So there really are different ways that you can go about maximizing the array uh, the one property that you currently have, depending on how much uh, liquidity you have in it, and making sure that you don't, uh, you know, make some of those mistakes. And I'm sure that, you know, Martha, you're probably now thinking, you know, had I not bought that property, maybe I could have been able to do X, Y, Z with this. We've, uh, we've got another one here from Amber Haywood, who says that buy a property in the early phases of a big development, whereby the escalation increases. And that's a really important one. Thank you so much for sharing there, Amber. Uh, I think if, if you actually go back to the conversation that we had, uh, we, where we looked at what the questions you need to ask when you're buying into a development. That was a conversation we had with Grant Smear. We really did look at, uh, we'll say the pros and cons really of buying into a new development. And one of the tips that he did say was the earlier you buy into a big development, certainly the better for you as the buyer because you're, buy, you're, you're buying at a lower price than when you're finding it, let's say it's stage five, where they're selling the last phase of the development. And by then the prices 
have you know, substantially escalated. So you really want to get in as early as possible in these new developments. So do listen back to that conversation with Grant Smear. Uh, you can go back on our YouTube channel and access that episode. Another one we've got here from, of course, one of our regular viewers is Upon Sabagwena, who says, if all fails, can Zama talk to us about her property journey? She has, come, uh, she has some nuggets, you know. <laughs> you know, I always say to the team, I sometimes uh, shy away from talking about um, my own property journey. Um, I, I, I like sharing the little bit where I, you know, I made some, some of my own mistakes. And, and I think certainly mistakes that people can learn from without having to, to make. Uh, I think it's sometimes you, you make mistakes that, that cost us money and you only realize in retrospect that, oh, actually, you know, had I, had I known X, Y, Z, I would have done better. But Bangs, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we can put that in. Um, we'll see how I can start sharing a little bit about my own property journey uh, as, as the weeks go. And maybe we'll do a, a nice little teaser, certainly for the community uh, with the team where I can talk a little bit about my property journey. And I think, you know, one of the big things is certainly what that I've learned from my property journey, so I can, I can give you this one, is you're going to get scared, and, and I know a lot of our guests have certainly shared this one. You're going to get scared. Sometimes it might be slightly overwhelming, but you have to get to a point where you make a decision, right? Uh, I think the one thing about property is if all else fails, you're able to sell, you're able to sell your property, or there are different things you can do with it. Um, I think for me, it's been a very interesting journey that started in many different ways. Um, and, and I'm sure, Bonds, I'll be able to share in, in, due, in due course, but for now, we're certainly not going to share just yet. But of course, we do want to hear what some of your property lessons have been along the way and some of the lessons that you've learned that have maybe you know cost you money or perhaps that have saved you money. So if you even have tips for us on how we can you know walk this journey just slightly better and make sure that we watch out for certain things, do continue commenting below. We certainly want to hear from you and we want to, of course, learn from each other as a community. Folks, we're gonna leave it there for this evening. And Unfortunately, we couldn't have Okosi, but it was it was actually a great way for us to start talking about how we're going to make mistakes and we're going to be able to learn from those mistakes. We're seeing interest rates being lower. A lot of people are going to want to jump into property. Increasingly, more and more people want to access property, which is, of course, a good thing. So understanding uh, what it is you're going into and being clear about what the process is becomes so important. So do go back to some of the great episodes that we've shared right here on the Private Property Podcast, where we speak to different guests around, you know, getting into the property space, what you need to be doing becomes so important. Also remember to go to www.privateproperty.co.za under the advice section, where you'll be able to, you know, almost, you're literally able to put in, let's say, first home buyer, uh, and you can get you know, various results or interest rates or how to negotiate, you know, for better rates or perhaps OTP, you're able to get all those tips uh, and tricks that will help you on your property journey, which of course becomes such an important thing. And as usual, once you have you know, signed on that OTP or that property has been registered, do share with us. I think we like, we like hearing good news. Uh, we are a community that is uh, you know, really enjoys sharing good news together. Even whenever we you know, announce winners to various competitions, we're always getting congratulatory messages to the respective winners. So do share with us even when you make those wins. We're going to leave it there this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Private Property Podcast. We have promised to be back tomorrow with a really great speaker. And Bongs, I promise one of these good days I'll be able to share on my very own property journey. Until tomorrow evening, hoping you're staying home and staying safe. Thank you.
As a family, we've chosen to live in four ways because of the lifestyle and convenience. And this is our neighborhood. Hi, I'm Nicolene Ter Blanche and I'm part of the SA Women's Hockey Team and I'm the Technical Director of Tax Hockey and I'm also the Assistant Coach for the first two years. I moved to Ferry Glen about five years ago. Ferry Glen is a really safe place and the people are really kind. Some of my friends live really close by in suburbs like Equestria and Olympus. In the morning I will wake up, make myself a cup of coffee, go for a jog in the Ferry Glen Nature Reserve or even just in the neighbourhood. It's safe, quiet, and the environment is really nice. I love Ferry Glen because I'm near the city, but I'm not in the city. I like to go to Pretoria Country Club to clear my mind I'm on my own to relax and just to enjoy a round of golf. In Pretoria East we really have nice uh, places to visit like Midland Mall and Brooklyn Mall that is really close by. There are also a lot of top schools in the area like Pretoria Boys High and Hirsch Park. One of the most beautiful places to see the whole of Pretoria is the Fort Tapperkop viewpoint. And that's my neighborhood. 